Welcome back. Welcome back to Occupation. Um, today we will look at our last topic or our last little bit of the topic on clothing and how to repair clothing and just finish up our topic of sewing. We have already done the sewing by hand, which we have done already, which was very good. Um, but today we'll look at different different clothing. Hi. Okay. So for our clothing, remember the first one we looked at was just normal taking care of our clothes. So one was ironing clothes. Two was what is the meaning and importance of maintaining clothes. We looked at collecting and folding the clothes. We also looked at washing and drying the clothes. And lastly, we're looking at repairing our clothing. So last time we did the sewing, just the normal sewing. I don't want us to do all these other ones because they, they might take a lot of time. So if you look at the how to sew on fasteners. Now a fastener, we'll have a look at into what that is now and how you would do that. So the first one is the fastener in this case are hooks and eyes, which are used for holding two pieces of fabric together. This boy, yes, in the blue block, saying you can see fasteners soon on sewn on the edge of pants, skirts, and shirts as a pair. The following are different types of fasteners. So first we have a hook. It's a bent piece of metal that is used for joining with an eye. For joining with an eye. The next one is an eye. It's a bent piece of metal that joins with a hook. There are three types of eyes, and let's look at how they look. So at the bottom, a small eye can be found on the cuffs of a shirt, brassieres and collars, small eye. The second one is a bar is used with the waistband or pants or skirt. And the last one, an adjustable bar is used for the waistband of pants or skirts, but allow, it allows users to easily adjust the position of the bar based on how big your waistline is. So materials and equipment for sewing on fasteners. So if we want to do fasteners and you want to sew them, we would first need to have some needles, obviously. We'll need some thread. Uh, we'll need some scissors, uh, eyes or bars. These ones, we'll need some of these things. And we'll need some hooks to hook them into. So they're literally set like this, and then the hook hooks in there, and it's tight. Um, let me quickly get you an example, just a moment. The ones they show in the pictures might not be the ones we use currently. I have a, a brown pair of pants here. And you can see, here's a far, one fastener on this side. And then we have the hook, the hook on this side. So what this does is the eye, the hook goes through the eye you press it through, and then it is stuck. And then you also have this form where you can have a button and a hole to fasten. So this one has two fasteners in the, in the pants. But the first one is the eye. You see the eye there. And the next is the hook. 
So we take the hook and we press it through the eye. If I press it the wrong way around, you can see you take the hook and you press it through the eye and then it is stuck, can't come undone. That is for fastening our pants. We have the same thing on belts. We have the same thing on certain shirts. So we, most of clothing these days have some form of fastener, especially with people being different sizes. And if you make clothing in Thailand and you want to send it to other parts of the world, then you'll have to use different sizes because different people around the world are different in size. So you will might have to have fasteners and releases to make them bigger and smaller for other people. It's quite interesting. So yes, just the step procedure of how you will fasten a hook or um, eye. But I, I do not want us to practice this because this is not something that we are going to do. Uh, this is just something that I want us to know about. Um, but currently, the most important part for me is just for us to be able to fix our clothing and to make our clothing nice and, and repair it beautifully. So let's look at the first picture here on step one. Put the hook on the preferred position. So put the hook where you want it and then insert the thread in the needle. Remember, the thread and the needle, I don't know about you guys, but I struggle. You know, that thread and that needle is very small. You have to be very precise. And you have to, if you get it in there, you have to catch it so it doesn't fall out again. So we put the needle and the thread, and then we tie a knot at the end of the thread like we did in the first time. And then insert the needle through the bottom layer of the fabric. So you'll have the fabric. You have the fabric here. And you have your hook. You place the hook where you want it on the fabric. And from the bottom, from the bottom, you will start sewing up to the top layer and right at the position you put the hook. Pull the thread taut just means a little tighter and then they say stab the needle through the top layer beside the hook and then pull it out so it will form little round threads around the parts where you are tightening them so and pull it out and then insert the needle through the bottom layer hmm? And insert the needle through the bottom layer up to the top again at the position you put the hook so you go through lines like we did in and out like we did with the hook if we zoom in here we can see these little threads are going around the hook around it so they are in and out in and out through the hook outside the hook the circle in the circle outside the circle to make it tighter around all the edges to make it tighter around all the edges okay so they say repeat the process four to six times so that it is strong enough to secure the first holding position of the hook do the same for the rest of the holding positions so these hooks they use how many holding positions do you think it has? One, two, or three? Who can tell me? One, two, or three? How many holding positions? How many circles do you see that we have to tighten up? How many circles do you see here on the hook? This is the hook. How many circles do we have? 
how many circles? I'm listening. One, two, or three. Who can tell me? Take a guess. Anyone? One, two, or three. How many circles do you see in this little small iron picture? How many circles is there? Three. There is three circles. Very good, Jasmine. Excellent. There is three circles. What this means is that we have to do the process that we are talking about. Yeah. We have to do it three times. So they say repeat the process four to six times in each. So once you're strong enough in the first holding position, we still have two more to do. And once we've done all three, it is tight and it will not come off anymore. So if you look there, it says, do the same to the rest of the holding positions of the hook and tie the knot taut at the end and cut the remaining thread. So that is for uh, that is just simply tying it in all places to make sure that it is stuck on the piece of clothing and it is fastened properly. So it cannot come off. You can pull it, but all the thread is keeping it tight. So you cannot just take it off again. You'll have to cut all the thread and then take it off. Okay. So once we have our hook secure, we can look at our eye and where do we want to put the eye? So the procedure for sewing on eyes or bars. Put the eye or bar vertically in the correct position. So obviously you, you do not want... <clears throat> To have a hook, you have a hook, uh, but then your eye is upside down because how can you hook if it can't go through the eye? It can't go through the eye. You turn it sideways, yes, then we can put it through the eye and it's stuck. Right? And it's stuck. So make sure that you put your eyes or bars at the correct angle if your hook is like this your eye should be like this so it can go in and hook go in and hook don't put your eye like this because it cannot go in change it and then the hook will go and hook there okay so put the eye or bar vertically in the correct position corresponding to the hook, meaning which way is the hook pointing? You must make sure your eye or your bar is in a position where the hook can go into it. Okay. Insert the thread and tie the two ends of the thread together. Okay. Insert the needle through the bottom layer of the fabric up to the top layer and at the position where you put the eye or bar and pull the thread taut. So again, we're going through those little holes they have and we're just in and out, making sure we keep it nice and tight. So next we push the needle through the top layer beside the eye, pull it out, and then insert the needle through the bottom layer up to the top again at the holding position. Yes. Pull the thread taut and repeat the process four to six times so that it can uh, be strong enough to secure the first yeah. of the eye. Do the same for the rest yeah. of the holding yeah. position. And tie the knot taut at the Meow. end. Meow. Aishin, do you want to say something? Yarmanoon. 
Listen. I want to say something. What? Uh, no. What? Listen, teacher. Okay. 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 So, yes, if you look at this as our eye, we look at this rubber band as the eye. If we want to put the eye on the fabric, to put the eye on the fabric, we have to go in and out around the eye, in and out, in here, out here, in here, out here, to make sure that we can tighten this one against the fabric so that it is tight. And then we can put the hook that will catch it and will make sure that it is secure. Has any of you ever uh, tried to do this type of sewing? Have any of you ever tried to do it? Let's hear. Has anyone tried to put on a hook or an eye before on something that was broken? Anyone? No. Oh, that's a shame. I like, I like to try and always do my own thing. So when it comes to my clothing, I wash my own clothing. I make sure I hang them and dry them. I iron them and fold them and I put them in the cupboard. And I also try and fix them. Sometimes they're a little bit too damaged. Like I have a pair of pants which has a very big hole in it. And that one I have not fixed because I'm not sure um, how many thread, how much thread I would need for it. Okay. Let's quickly look at this activity and we run, we run, we run through it. Let's see what they have to say here. So check out damage to your clothes and one of your family members and then present an appropriate method for repairing them in the following diagram. So for an example, I will grab my broken piece of clothing. Just a moment. So here I have another another black pants. I have a lot of lot of pants. So here's an example. Okay, let's just go. So the pants normally look like this, but it has a big hole. I don't know if you can see me. My pants have a big hole here. So uh, if you look at it. Let's look at the damage here. So there's a big hole. What do we, what do you think we can do to fix this hole? Say hello, hello. What can we do? So first, the damage characteristics. We're going to say here, very big hole in pants because it's a very big hole in the pants okay what else what else can you see what else can you see why is there a hole why is there a hole to look at like this this hole is due to poor stitching so there you can see the line there's a line that it runs there let me just change it Next to the hole, there's a line that goes straight. That is where they stitched the pants together. So this is poor stitching. So the stitching came loose. So we can say here. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, stitching problem. Stitching problem. Okay. So now we have to look at how we're going to repair it. Uh, do you think we throw it away? Let's see. Let's see. Throw it away. Do you think we throw it away, or can we fix it? What do you think?
Anyone, what do we think? Do you think we can fix the fence? Do you think we can fix this fence? This fence is a big hole. Do you think we can fix it? Yes or no? Anyone? Sudan, are you here? Yes. Can, can yes. we fix it? Yes. Yes, we can fix it. Very good. Yes, we can fix it. So we do not throw it away. No. We do not throw it away. So first we look at, can it be fixed? So we say yes. Yes. Uh, I'm not typing. Yes, we can fix it. What are we going to do to fix it? What method are we going to use? Are we going to use super glue and duct tape to fix it? Uh, what are we going to use to fix it? Who, who knows? What can we use to fix it? Can we use glue? Can we use glue to fix it? Can we use glue and tape to fix it? Yes or no? Can we use glue or tape to fix it? Yes or no? Can we use glue or tape to fix the pants? Yes or no? No. Hmm. No, I think no. No, we cannot use glue or tape. No, it will not work. Very good. We're going to use thread and needle is the method of repair. Repair with a thread and a needle. We can repair it. So I have not repaired it. I might have to look into repairing it. But the one we can use for repairing is thread and needle to repair. <clears throat> okay, so we done the first one we've done. Let's look at the statement at the bottom. Statement at the bottom says here, put the following statements in the diagram in the correct order. So here they gave us some ways of fixing clothing. Let's put them in the correct order. So for number one, we have, oops, basting on the folded fabric, preparing equipment, inserting a needle and tying a knot taut. Ripping off the basting, pinning the folded line, folding the edge of the fabric, sewing the hem by using the blind slip stitch method. Oh, what do we think is our first step? This one tricky. What is our first step? Step number one. Who wants to take a guess? Before we do anything, we first have to prepare our equipment. Preparing equipment. We have to prepare the equipment. We have to prepare the equipment. Prepare them. Make sure we have everything. It doesn't help we want to do the job if we don't have the tools. You know? Okay, so number two, so we have number one. Hmm. We have number one. What about number two? 
So first we're going to folding the edge of the fabric, number two. Folding the edge of the fabric. Folding the edge of the fabric. Number two, folding the edge of the fabric. What about number three? Hmm. Number three, what do we think? Hmm. Spinning the Steven, can you tie? Folded line. Spinning the folded line. Uh. So that is number three. What about the rest? The next one is something that I didn't remember seeing in the book. But it's basting. Basting on the folded fabric. I'm not sure if you know about basting. But yeah, we first baste the folded fabric after we pin the folded line. Oh no, sorry, we have to. It's first basted. First, number three, first we basting on the folded fabric. Then we are pinning the folded line. Spinning the folded line. Yes. Then, what do we think then? We have three left. Three left. The next one is pink by pink. Pink by pink. Ripping of the pasting. And then two more. Which one? This, this, this one I'll leave for you for you guys. You must give me the answer. Do we first insert a needle and trying a, tying a knot taut, or do we sew the hem first? Do we first do sewing or first tying a knot with the thread? Which one do we do first? Insert a needle and tying it taut. Yes, the thread and the needle, tying it taut or sewing the hem by using the blind stitch method or slip stitch method. Which one is first? Uh, Which one? Just means, eh? Is it the green one or the blue one? Green or blue? Can you tie Jasmine? Green or blue? It's a 50-50. It's a 50. It doesn't guess. What, 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 what? You have a name? Do we insert the needle or do we first sew the hem? So what does that mean? We have a needle and we have thread. Now the thread we put through and we tie the thread. To tie the thread is the first step. We cannot do the sewing if we don't tie a knot. If we don't tie a knot. So anyone, okay, let's do. So first we sew the hem. Sewing the hem by using the blind slip stitch method. And after we have done our stitching and doing our sewing, then we Put the needle through, we tie a knot, and we pull it taut as our last step before we 
cut. Insert inserting a needle and tying a knot taut. Okay, and tying a knot taut. So those is our uh, that is the steps that we can do for the blind slip stitch. Okay. Our last slide is just also some question. Let's just have a look. And then we're going to do these questions. Okay. Okay, all questions, questions. So I'm not going to do any questions. I will prepare our own, I will, I will prepare our own test for that. Um, but I will also go through the work again before we write the test, just to make sure um, we all understand it. We all know what to do. Okay, so that's just basically our lesson to finish up stitching and sewing and repairing clothing. Um, we at least have already, we have an example of you guys doing the sewing. So now we can just maybe write a short test just to see if you understand what you are doing. But I will still prepare one for you. Um, and also we will first do revision. Okay. Um, but that was, that will be all for today. Not for today, for now. Uh, we have one more class after lunch, which is Yelp. And um, I will see you then in Yelp. And then we can finish the day off strong. Okay. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. 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 B